order the uh, meeting for the Board of Education of the Monona Road School District at 6.30 p.m. At this point, entertain a uh, motion to recess until we can have all board members present. So moved. Second. Second. Lower second. Okay. Motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. We'll hold in recess until we have everyone available. All right. Hi, Bob. We have a little bit of a delay here because uh, Susan Fox's electronics isn't working. So uh, we're going to sit around until she makes it to the district office. Okay, thanks. Yeah, you're, you're probably checking in to sort of be on time, but uh, we haven't uh, uh, even started yet. Did you have your first meeting yet? No, uh -uh, we haven't done anything because we haven't, oh. we haven't, we just uh, uh, called it to order and then recessed until. Do you want me to check back in like 30 minutes? Well, it's up to you. You can watch the mess, but yeah, if you want, you can. <laughs> you could spend this time with your family. <laughs> I'll check back in um, at seven. Okay, thanks.
See how much fun this is, Elizabeth? <laughs> <laughs> I just told my husband, I was like, well, I participated in my first vote. It was for <laughs> us to postpone our meeting. <laughs> So, you know, baby steps. <laughs> I appreciate the really soft, slow start you're giving me today. Oh, good. So thank you for setting that up. <laughs> Actually, this is the first time we've had any technical troubles. We've had a couple of meetings like this and no technical troubles. It's That's pretty amazing in and of itself. Yeah. I think Zoom's overloaded just when I'm watching it because it's dropped me twice now. I think just Zoom is overloaded. Because oh, I bet. Everybody's using them. Yeah. Yeah, I bet. I bet. Uh, one of the things you can do is you can mute your microphone and then uh, if you hold your uh, space bar, it, uh, open, it unmutes you. It's a good way to keep muted and then. That's slick. Yes, that's a convenient thing to do. Thank you. How are your parents doing? Oh, status quo. Yeah. Sorry, I just want to We're pop right. in and make sure you guys know that you're still streaming. Not that you'd say anything inappropriate, but I just want to double check that you know that. Oh, We're thank still you. We're still streaming live, yeah. Thank you. Oh, next I was going to talk about Joyce. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it's not me, that's fine.
Bradley? Now we've lost the other Susan. <laughs> All right, any board members who have stepped away that can hear um, are ready to go if you want to get ready to resume. Is that, is that working? Yep. Okay, good. Wow, sorry. I owe everybody drinks at some point <laughs> when we can do that again. <laughs> I thought it'd be donuts, but drink is fine too. Okay, donuts are okay too. You're still streaming <laughs> people, yeah. All right, we got everybody? All right. Okay, we will reconvene the meeting now at 6.43. Wow. And First uh, item on the agenda, has there been declaration of public notice? Yes. All right, so item one will be the election of the president uh, per board policy. Uh, you have the option to uh, request written ballots. Do I have any requests? I, I request written ballots. Okay, so we have a request from Susan Fox for written ballots. Okay, so at this point, we'll be ready to take nominations for the um, position of president, and we will do that through our electronic poll. All right. Okay, we have seven votes cast. We're going to close the poll. Do you see and, the results? Okay. And we have nominations for two board members. Uh, nominated for president are Andrew McKinney and Peter Sobel. So we will now close the nominations and we will have a vote for the position of president. Okay, so now the polling screen is not up on mine. Oh wait. It's not up on mine either. Yeah. Oh, okay. You don't want to share that. Correct. I haven't seen it yet either. Yeah, it was up there earlier, but it. Yeah. So the so we had two board members receive nominations, and so now we're preparing to prepare a ballot for the position of president with the two board members nominated. Okay. Oh, I see how it works. Got it. All righty. Well, no, except you just said we were going to get a ballot just with the two people on it. My ballot shows everybody again. Yeah. Just remember it's those two. Okay. All right. I apologize. Clarification because these had to be pre written. Um, generated, all seven names will appear. So we'll verbally have to announce which members are uh, under consideration for the vote. Okay. 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 So even though you see all seven, the two board members nominated again are Andrew McKinney or Peter Sobel. So please uh, cast your vote for one or the other. Okay, we have seven votes cast. We will end the polling. Do we want to share that? Okay, we can share the results. Um, the um, elected officer for president is Andrew McKinney with five votes. Okay, so at this point, I will turn the uh, chair over to President McKinney. Mm. 
Thank you everyone for having the confidence in me to be president again. So I'll go ahead and move on. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to ask for uh, nominations for vice president at this time. Rick, uh, Um, point of order, do we have to request anonymous ballots for each um, uh, uh, position or just once? We never have in the past. We've just requested them for the whole thing. That was my intention when I requested it. But if people care, I'll request it again. Okay, at this point, we have seven ballot or nominations cast. And we have two board members nominated for vice president, Susan Fox and Laureen Gage. And now we're accepting vote for the position of vice president. Okay, at this point, we have six votes cast. Okay, we have seven votes cast, so we'll end the polling. Okay. So. Well, Susan Fox is the vice president. Thank you. All right, we're moving on to the election of the treasurer. Will we? Uh, we'd like to go ahead and put the poll out there for treasurer. Okay, we have seven. Votes or nomination or votes cast for not the nominations. All right, we have four board members nominated for the position of treasurer: Elizabeth Cook, Lorraine Gage, Susan Manning, and Peter Sobel. So, if anyone would like me to repeat that before you vote, we have four board members nominated for treasurer. You can now cast your vote. Okay, we have seven votes cast. And I think we can share the results. We do have a majority vote. Thank you. All right, hey, Andrew, Lorraine, do you want to announce? Yep, Lorraine Gage is now our treasurer. Congratulations. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving to election of clerk. We will now do our nomination.
Okay, we have all seven board members have cast their ballots. We have three board members nominated for the position of clerk. Susan Fox, Eric Hartz, and Susan Manning. Thank you. Since um, Susan's already been elected. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm going to withdraw. Yeah. <laughs> and two offices. Okay. I'll withdraw. Okay. So, uh, President McKinney, then we have one remaining nominee. So, um, Based upon that, there's no need for a plea. Yeah. Go ahead. Do we have yeah. to move oh. acclamation vote or no? We can. Oh, we can. I can go ahead and just make that announcement, I guess. No, we, we have to vote one we way can, or another. We have to vote. So we could say, move. I, I move by acclamation that we elect Susan Manning as treasurer. That's what we've done before. Yeah. Clerk. Clerk. It requires clerk. a second. Clerk. clerk. I'm sorry, clerk. Lorraine clerk. has to be the treasurer. She's the treasurer. Sorry, clerk. <laughs> It does mean I had to go in the building and canvas during the there, virus. There needs to be a second to that, and then we have to vote. So I, I move that we approve Susan Manning as clerk by acclamation. I'll, I'll second. Okay. Uh, I guess we have to do a roll call vote out here. All right. um, starting with myself, Andrew McKinney, aye. Susan Manning. Aye. Elizabeth Cook. Aye. Susan Fox. Aye. Lorraine Gage? Aye. Eric Hartz? Aye. Peter Sobel? Aye. Motion carries. Okay, I'll just, if you don't mind, thank you for your understanding that a little bit of clunkiness, you know, through that process. Um, yeah. But um, we, actually, it worked, worked we, pretty well. It went yeah. pretty well. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, designation of depositories for school funds. I'd make a motion for approval of the resolution naming the following institution as depositories for school funds from the Monroe Grove School District, Monroe Grove State Bank, Summit Credit Union, PMA Financial Network, and the statutorily authorized investment options to which they recommend U.S. Bank and Wisconsin Investment Series cooperate. Second. All right, we have first and second. Any uh, discussion? No discussion. All in, uh, all in favor, roll call vote. Susan Manning. Aye. Andrew McKinney. Aye. Aye. Elizabeth Cook. Aye. Susan Fox. Aye. Lorraine Gage. Aye. Eric Hartz. Aye. Peter Sobel. Aye. And just for the record, we can have discussion on any of these items. So, uh, um, you know, it's it's oh. perfectly appropriate to call for discussion. Yeah. Okay. So if it's okay, I'll just won't comment unless there's a request for clarification from board members. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Moving on to scheduling a regular board meetings and dates and locations. I'd move approval of the 2021 board meeting schedule as presented. Oh, second. <laughs> Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote starting with myself. All in favor? Andrew McKinney, aye. Susan Manning? Aye. Elizabeth Cook? Aye. Susan Fox? Aye. Lorraine Gage? Aye. Eric Hartz? Aye. Peter Sobel? Aye. Motion carries. Next is de designation of legal counsel. I would move approval of a resolution naming the following firms as legal counsel for the Mountain Grove School District Boardman and Clark Law Offices, WASB Council, Quarles and Brady, DeWitt, Ross and Stevens, SC, Godfrey and Kahn, SC, Strang, Peterson, Renning, Lewis and Lacey, SC, John Breesen, Von Breesen and Roper, SC, and Bulow Vetter, Bokema, Olson, and Fleet, LLC. Second. Right. Any discussion? Does this include Chad's firm? I just want to make sure. I'm not sure which one he's with. Yeah, that's string pass and running. Yes. Okay, okay, thanks. Yeah. Okay. All right. All in favor, roll call vote. Start myself, Andrew McKinney. Aye. Susan Manning. Aye. Elizabeth Cook. Aye. Susan Fox. Aye. Lorraine Gage. Aye. Eric Hartz. Aye. 
Peter Sobel. Aye. Motion carries. Next item, designation of official newspaper. Um, I move approval of a resolution naming the Herald Independent McFarland Thistle as the official newspaper of the school district. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor roll call vote, starting with me, Andrew McKinney, aye. Susan Manning. Aye. Elizabeth Cook. Aye. Susan Fox. Aye. Lorraine Gage. Aye. Eric Hartz. Nay. Peter Sobel. Aye. The ayes have it. Motion carries. Next up, designation for CISA to uh, represent, re uh, representative. Yeah. Actually, we oh. skipped professional members and pro membership and professional organizations. Oh, did I? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I did. I am sorry. I apologize. Okay. Uh, I move, no. move approval of re resolution naming the following organizations professional organizations, which the Monona Grove School Districts are members Wisconsin Associated School Boards and CISA 2. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Andrew McKinney, aye. Susan Manny? Aye. Elizabeth Cook? Aye. Susan Fox? Aye. Lorreen Gage? Aye. Eric Hart? Aye. Peter Sobel? Aye. Motion carries. Now, sorry about that, designation of CISA II representative. Who wants to do that? Dean did it before. Well, and I, I've done it a few times too. I assume this year it'll be a Zoom meeting. It, it is, um, for those of you who, Elizabeth and Lorraine, it, it's a one-time meeting. You just go to, they have a board meeting, the board like we do, and they have to have an annual meeting every year. And this is their annual meeting. Um, okay, I I'll do that. It'll be by Zoom this year. Um, and it's usually have to drive to Whitewater for it, but this year I assume yeah. it'll be um, online. Zoom. And, yeah, it's basically just, um, I, I don't know this year if there's a representative from our region up, but you can potentially vote on who the representative, it's been the guy, uh, board member from Deerfield for a while. And if he's still on the board, yeah. I assume he'll want to do it again. Um, so it's a pretty perfunctory, but they, you know, they talk a little about season two. It's a good way to learn a little about what season two does. Either or. Yeah, I'm happy to do that. Or Florine, if you want it. I don't mind. One of you mon nominate yourselves. <laughs> I'll nominate myself. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go, Lorraine. Okay. So I need a motion to approve Lorraine Gage. Um, I move to approve uh, Lorraine Gage to serve as the CISA II representative for 2020 2021. Second. Second. All right. Susan, Susan Mann is second. Uh, any discussion? Well, yeah, if I'd known it involved going to a beautiful downtown Whitewater, I would have wanted to go myself. <laughs> water, right? Not this not year. downtown Whitewater. It's out in the boonies. <laughs> yeah, it takes you a solid it takes 40 minutes. Yeah, it's, it. so yeah. it's, 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 it's a beautiful building, though. It is. No, it's a beautiful building, though. Yeah, it's it very nice. It is nice. Okay. I love Susa, too. All right. Roll call vote, starting with myself. Andrew McKinney, aye. Susan Manning, aye. Elizabeth Cook. Aye. Susan Fox. Aye. Lorraine Gage. Aye. Eric Hart. Aye. Peter Sobel. Aye. Motion carries. Designation of Monona Grove Education represent, uh, Representative, MGEF. I'd uh, like to see if anyone likes to be a rep uh, representative. And just to be clear, this entails meetings on the second Tuesday of every month from four to five thirty. And actually, um, I've done that before, and I'd be willing to do it again. Um, and basically, the other thing that Dean and I did was I did it for like six months, and then he did it for six months. Um, part of the expectation is that they do expect you to help 
with their major fundraiser. And um, sometimes help turns into a pretty big word. Um, but they do, there is an expectation that you are kind of involved, that you don't just go to the meetings, that you kind of be a partner in their fundraising efforts and their teacher grants. So that's a piece. Although the board piece is, is a liaison piece. So that's kind of up to the person, but yeah. That's true. Right. I'm just telling what the expectation yeah, right. is. Right. It is fun. Anybody else interested? Uh, All right. Then um, I would move approval of Susan Manning to serve as the Banana Grove Education Foundation representative for 2020-2021. Second. Okay, with a quick second. Any, well, uh, I just have one question. One of the things that we did before when it works well is that there's a backup person that would also kind of be interested in learning what it's like. So if I couldn't go, I would call that person and see if they could go. And maybe they couldn't go either, but it does help get somebody else involved. If you guys have any interest in doing that, that's up to you. And, and in addition, I would point out that Dan and, and or Katie usually attend this too. So we do have some backup, but yeah, if somebody wants to be backup. But they don't report out. Right, there's, well, there's, yeah, that's up to the board to decide with, I guess, if we want to report out every time, but right. yeah, okay. Okay. So we have a first and second for Susan Manning. Uh, uh, roll call vote, all in favor. Andrew McKinney, aye. Susan Manning. Aye. Elizabeth Cook. Aye. Susan Fox. Aye. Lorraine Gage. Aye. Eric Hartz. Aye. Peter Sobel. Peter's on mute. You're on mute, Peter. <laughs> Aye. All right. Motion carries. Uh, designation for Wisconsin Association of School Board Delegate, WASPI. Uh, I've done it the past couple of years, and I would like to do it again. Andrew McKinney. Susan? I would move approval of Andrew McKinney to serving as the Wisconsin Association of School Board Delegate for 2020-2021. Second. All right, here, first and second, any discussion? All right, hearing none, uh, roll call vote, all in favor, Andrew McKinney, aye. Susan Manning. Aye. Elizabeth Cook. Aye. Susan Fox. Aye. Lorraine Gage. Aye. Eric Hartz. Aye. Peter Sobel. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Peter, you might have froze up. I think he did. Not moving. <laughs> oh, no. Can you hear us, Peter? Oh, well, well maybe. we have maybe the majority more. right now till we can get him back. Right. I think he, okay, oh, he's there back. You. He's back. Aye. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I didn't I, miss motion, a step. That's motion nice carry. Step, <laughs> motion carry. Okay. Next is the designation of Monona Grove New Teacher Project Steering Committee rep, uh, Representative. Uh, Dan will discuss uh, representation. Yeah, and so when this was initially developed as a having a board liaison is when, um, you know, this was a relatively, well, when it, from its inception, they had a board liaison and they met monthly. It was a steering committee as, um, as this was really getting off on the ground. Now, the last few years that is a well-established program, they actually only meet quarterly. Uh, it is informational for the board. There's not really any um, new decisions to be made. It's really more updates on the professional development that's happening with our staff and so on. So uh, anyone that would have an interest in that would be a great, uh, uh, you know, liaison position for someone. I'm interested uh, in that. And I would good. nominate I, myself for that. I was just going to nominate Elizabeth Cook. It's, <laughs> again, it's, it's a wonderful experience yeah. to see what they're doing and how they do it. And it's, um, it's a yeah, it seems great, great, great experience. Okay, um, 
So we need a motion. Um, I would move uh, approval of Elizabeth Cook serving as the Monona Grove new teacher project steering committee representative for 2020-2021. I second. All right. Any further discussion? All right, hearing none. All in favor, roll call vote. Andrew McKinney, aye. Susan Manning. Aye. Elizabeth Cook. Aye. Susan Fox. Aye. Lorraine Gage. Aye. Eric Hartz. Aye. Peter Sobel. Aye. Motion carries. Next is the designation of board legislation liaison. Um, I've, I've done this in the past and I'm interested in continuing. I, I work with the Wisconsin Public Education Network. Um, I do attend hearings when they come up, um, assuming there'll be hearings we can attend this year um, and write legislation. So I'd be interested in doing it again unless somebody else wants to do it. But that's, that's what it entails. It does entail being able to go to hearings when they pop up and sometimes they come up on short notice. Um, sometimes driving to a different city to attend a joint finance meeting, that kind of thing. Um, so and reporting out. And I move approval of Susan Fox serving as the legislative liaison for 2020-2021. I'll second it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just to move it along. <laughs> All right. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none. Uh, all in favor, roll call, starting with myself, Andrew McKinney. Aye. Susan Manning. Aye. Elizabeth Cook. Aye. Susan Fox. Aye. Lorraine Gage. Aye. Eric Hartz. Aye. Peter Sobel. You're on mute, Peter. Aye. All right. Having a little trouble with the connection, too. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank Motion you. carries. Uh, next, we have a designation of membership in Wisconsin Public Education Network. I move approval of membership in Wisconsin Public Education Network for 2020-2021. I'll second. All right. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, roll call vote. Andrew McKinney, aye. Susan Manning. Aye. Elizabeth Cook. Aye. Susan Fox. Aye. Lorraine Gage. Aye. Eric Hart. Aye. Peter Sobel. Aye. All right, motion carries. All right. Uh, now we're moving on to a special report. Uh, transition into construction. Uh, we'll talk with uh, Peter Sandon and Christine Misna. Did I get that right? Kristen. Milsna, but that's close enough. Kristen Milsna. <laughs> All right. Good. Well, thank you um, for having us here today. Uh, we are so excited um, to talk about construction and what's next for you. Um, so Elizabeth, it's wonderful to meet you. Um, congratulations on being here and congratulations to everyone on their roles um, as you've moved forward. So um, Peter and I are here today on behalf of Findorf. So um, Elizabeth, for you and for others that may not remember, um, I'm the director of our education market and communication services at Findorf. Um, so I get the priv uh, privilege of spending 100% of my time working with our school clients. Um, so that's my focus. Um, I really um, do focus my time on anything to do with communications and engagement. So I was real active um, working with the district um, early on as you were planning, working through your referendum campaign. And then I will continue to work with Peter and his team through construction to make sure that we're continuing to deliver on um, those areas that are important as it relates to communications. So um, that's me, uh, Peter. You want to introduce yourself? Yes, hello. Uh, my name is Peter Sandin. Uh, I'm with Bendorf. I'm a project manager. I've been involved with this project since uh, I think I met everybody at the interview process a couple years back. And uh, early on, it was a lot of budgeting as they were as we were looking at options. And then we've been a part of the bidding and the planning and working with EUA as, as they've pre prepared the documents. 
And then uh, also now we're getting ready to start construction. And that's the purpose of this slide. And I'm really excited to be working with the district and we've already created some great relationships and excited to see what uh, the new building and all the renovations are gonna look like when we're all done. Excellent. And then Peter, I think you're gonna do um, a screen share so they can see the presentation that uh, we are looking at as well. So Peter, we'll pull that up. Um, again, you know, we're really, we want to do a few things today. We want to just make sure you know about Findorf. So that'll be really, really brief. Um, and then we'll turn over and let Peter talk about the projects that are happening, the teams, um, and also talk about what success is going to look like through construction. And then we're happy to take any um, questions after that. So Peter, that was the next slide if you're advancing forward. Um, so I will just go into um, a little bit about Findorf. Um, so for those of you that don't know, um, we have been around since 1890, um, about 40% of our work is in the school market. So this is a place that we're really comfortable, really active. Um, so hopefully you've had an opportunity um, to see us um, in the surrounding communities as well. So Peter, I think I'm on the next slide if you're able to advance that forward. Um, we have hundreds of individuals at Findorf that do work in um, school environments. So in renovated spaces and new spaces. So we really understand what it's like to work in that school market. So that's an important piece of who we are. Uh, we were founded in Madison. We have a Milwaukee and a Wausau office as well. Um, so that's just another important piece of um, our background. Another thing that we're really proud of um, and one of the reasons we got so excited to form this partnership with you as a district is we have 20 Fender families that live in the community. So um, those individuals have kids that go to the schools um, in your district. So they are so excited to be a part of this. Um, and we have been as a company working with the district since 2016. Um, we started working with Jared and Jeff on some smaller scale work. And then we had the, the privilege to work with you um, through your 2018 uh, referendum planning process. Um, and then you may have seen us on, I guess, um, a larger project, um, that first phase of the renovation work, which was completing MG21. So um, Peter and his team um, led that process there as well. That's a little bit about Findorf and I'll turn it over to Peter. Thanks, Kristen. So as Kristen mentioned, I'm, I'm Peter and project manager uh, for all the district projects on the main point of contact. Um, we, like you said, we started with MG21 and uh, we're working on some other schools now, which we'll get into in a minute. Uh, Kristen's also a, a great source, resource and contact in this process. And then two other gentlemen, uh, Matt Brinig is the director of project management. He's in on some meetings. You guys, a lot of you uh, that have been in some of these meetings have met him already. And Brian Horning is one of our owners. He's our, our project and team executive for this project. So if, if you ever see them or want to reach out to them, they're a, a resource as well. So we like to start by uh, talking about terminology. Um, we use a lot of terminology that's probably very foreign to school districts. And at first, you know, you start saying things and I use words like RFI and CB and, and uh, costs and, and everybody's like, what's, what's, what are we talking about here? And, and so we like to take a step back and just and help you understand a couple of things with when it comes to our terminology. Not that I can explain it all tonight. You know, I look at what's on the screen here and, you know, Kristen put this on the screen and I was like, what are some of these Kristen, you know? And it's, it's just, it shows the, the point that uh, I, I don't understand everything that's going on in school districts. I don't understand every, every acronym you have. There's hundreds, maybe thousands of them. But the one thing I do know is I, I'm not afraid to ask. I, I wanna understand it. I wanna make sure it makes sense to me. And so I'll ask the question and that's what we wanna do. We wanna encourage you to ask the questions we understand there's going to be terminologies you don't know, might not understand, maybe you haven't heard before, and it's okay to ask the question. So um, some of the key ones we'll go over here. And like I said, just like school districts, we, we have probably hundreds of them as well. But see, some of the key ones you'll hear today and maybe uh, in, in upcoming presentations. PPE is personal protective equipment. That's what we wear when we go on a job site. We'll get into that in this meeting. HVAC is heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. That's uh, the duct work and the air handling units that push the air around and condition your spaces. MEP is mechanical, electrical, and plumbing. And those are the more mechanical is like the HVAC, electrical brings your power and lighting into the building and plumbing is, is supplies water and gets rid of waste. ff &E is the furniture, fixtures, and equipment. BIM is building information modeling. That's where we model the building uh, with the assistance and model from EUA. Um, RFI is request for information where we, uh, the contractor would ask 
the the architect at UA uh, for a question. And so we just call it an RFI, request for information, and then we document that. Um, RFP is a request for proposal. That's one you might have heard before. And CV is a construction bulletin. So once again, just a couple simple couple simple terminologies, uh, some acronyms we use, and then some, some words or quick phrases we use, contingency. Contingency of dollars that are held for unpredictable, unpredictable circumstances. So when we put together a budget early on, we're always holding some contingency dollars um, because we don't know of every situation that might occur. And so we recommend certain contingency dollars based on what we know of the project. So that's what contingency is. Soft costs are non-construction costs, such as design fees or furniture or IT, uh, uh, pieces of equipment, et cetera. A uh, grade, this is not the grade that you might understand from uh, being a school district, but grade is the bottom of a structure, which is normally where the earth happens. Um, and then when we refer to slab on grade, that's where the concrete that we pour that sits exactly on the, the earth, as it would be, or the stone or sand that it has to sit on right below it. But it's the one that sits on the ground. So if you'd walk in from ground level, you'd be on the slab on grade. If you walked upstairs, you'd be on an elevated slab. It would not be on grade anymore. Joist is a, a piece of steel, a, a long piece of steel that's put together uh, that supports the structure. Columns are, are solid pieces of steel, uh, like a pillar, can be stone or concrete or steel. Substructure is a building portion below the grade. So if we say, hey, we're working on substructure, it means we're working on the, the structure portions that are below the grade or the ground level that you walk on. And the superstructure is the building portion above the grade. So once again, these are just, what have I gone through now? 14, 15 uh, terminologies, acronyms for you. But the idea here is to show you that there's a lot of different ones. Don't feel bad to ask questions as we go. I'm going to try throughout my process, and I have to this to this point, try to use terminology and then explain it. Uh, not because I think anybody is is dumb or doesn't know, or it's, it's just I don't want to assume. And so I'll explain it. And if I forget to, please be, feel free to ask me. Uh, we get a lot of questions, and we we want to encourage that. And that's the whole point here. So today, tonight, we're going to break this up into a couple different portions. We're going to talk about a project overview for the new school, and then we're going to talk about a project overview for the uh, all the renovations and kind of go through them in that order. And uh, Kristen, I think Kristen mentioned it, but we will, if you have questions, we'll save them for the end. So jot them down and we'll be, we'll be totally available at the end to ask questions. So for the new school, this is the project team, myself, that will be the project manager and the main point of contact. And Larry Baker is the project superintendent. He'll be the main point of contact on site. So when people come into the site, he's the main uh, superintendent. He's kind of my counterpart, uh, but he, he leads the field staff. Brian Hebel will also be a project superintendent on the job. Uh, Graham Schrader Gasser is the project engineer working with myself in the office. We, we do have a trailer on site, which you'll see a picture of in a minute. And him and I will be in that trailer uh, once we get to where we can actually be in an office uh, more regularly, we'll be in there uh, practicing safe social distancing. Um, Aaron Strady is the safety supervisor on site. Uh, he will be there, uh, he takes a couple times a week. And then we're also working on, uh, we've been working with the school district on hiring a youth apprentice. And we're, we haven't got anybody right just yet. We're still wait, working on that, but we like to do this on school jobs and it really introduces uh, young people um, into the construction industry and uh, gives them a chance to look at it, look at how, what we do and how we do it. And we just did this out at Verona High School. and. He was actually hired on as an apprentice with Findorf, so it's a great all around. And so the construction team, we, we manage the construction projects. We, uh, we work with the local workforce and community engagement, and we manage changes to the schedule, to the cost, to the budget. And uh, then also we have, and, and not that we want to minimize here, put them on the bottom, Bob's on the call here, Bob Beigert, senior project manager with EUA, and Gary Woodward, who's the construction administrator uh, with EUA. We've had a lot of meetings early on where they've kind of been the point person, and that's why this is the transitioning to construction uh, presentation. Bob and Gary are now, the design is complete, but now they're there to verify what you and, and they have designed and, and accepted is actually being put in. So they're there to really check up on us and for us to ask questions to and be a really great resource. And so it's a good thing we have a good relationship with them because we're, we're moving right along. They also conduct site reviews as well. So the schedule. The schedule for the new school, um, I have a little pointer here. If it gets you kind of sick, just let me know and I'll try not to stop, try not to do it. So this is a graphic that should be familiar to you. Um, you'll see here that the new school, the design happened uh, starting in 08 all the way through 19. We did some bidding and planning over the fall and winter of this past year. And the goal was to start construction in the spring. Uh, we actually started right when we, we hoped to be in April. Um, so far, knock on wood, we haven't had too much rain where it would really affect us, um, but we've started site work in, in April. So site work is a term saying we're doing all the kind of moving of earth and grass and putting berms up and digging holes and anything in the site. We actually, actually haven't started like construction materials yet, just yet. 
The second, the second uh, major milestone is in May of 2020. That's when the construction starts. So that's coming up here on May 4th. Uh, we're going to be, they're going to be digging some more holes and we're going to start putting footings in, which are pieces of concrete that support the building. And those are underground. October 20th is when we, we have a activation planning meeting that we've tentatively scheduled. Kristen will go into what activation planning is. And the goal is to have the structure, which would be the concrete and the steel and the precast for the gym, all completed by the end of October of this year. So it's a it's an aggressive schedule, but it's one we feel we can we can meet. March 20 of uh, 21, the goal is to by the end of March to have the building fully enclosed. What enclosed means to us is that if it rains or snows, it's not getting into the building. It may not have the final brick on. It may not have the, the final uh, metal panels or, or, or that, but it would have a roof and, and windows and it would have a, a barrier around the building uh, that's part of the building final product. And then the idea is that we'd have a construction complete by the end of July of 2021, which gives the district the month of August, maybe a couple extra days in there to move in before September. So a good month there uh, before school opens in September of 2021. See if this works here. Oh, here we go. Um, so a little video. It's a drone shot, which you can see in the background. This is you can't see my red dot, but this is Glacial Drumlin. Uh, you see the, the the barns here and the house that was purchased by the district. Now it looks very different if you've driven by it recently, but this is just giving you an idea where things go. Along this tree line is where the school is. The school is in the shape of a T. The top part of the T is here, and then it comes down back this way to the south. Cottage Grove Road is over here, and then the gym would sit uh, right here. So far, we've, we've seen a lot of great things on the site and uh, things are moving right along. So this is uh, our site plan, as it were. We, uh, this is not a, a design drawing by an architect. We take a site plan that's provided by the civil engineer where they show where roads and buildings are. And we mark it up with some, some essentially pretty colors to, to show the contractors and the, and the district what we're doing and how we're doing it. So the blue represents the fencing we're putting up. If you drive out there now, you'll see the fence in pretty much this location. Um, the, Light blue ABC represents the building footprint and the different sections that are shown in the drawing. So right now we will be starting in area B to put footings and, and concrete in first and then working on the structure in B and then we'll move to A and then we'll move to C. Um, this green area shows the construction road. So construction trucks should come into gate one. Gate two is up here, which will be used later, but they'll come into gate one and uh, drop stuff off for the building here. These dark green squares represent where we would have staging. There's a red area here that has uh, our trailer and some parking for visitors, and then a light blue area for uh, contractor or field parking. I'm about to show you a couple pictures here um, that from taken from different spots. One's gonna be taken from where the trailer is looking at the building here. I'll flip back and forth to show you. And another one's gonna be taken from up on the hill here looking to the south. So. This is the one looking uh, from up on the hill, looking to the south. So imagine yourself standing on this fence right here, looking down. And what you're seeing here is, uh, if you're standing on that hill line, this is the trailer. And then this, this weirdly orange colored sandy uh, clay in the, in the background is, is actually the gym. And that's where you'd see this right here. So standing here, looking this way, you see the gym and you see the trailer. So a lot of dirt has been moved. We're trying to get things to grade. So we're trying to get things down to the level of where the building's gonna be uh, flat at the ground. What that means when we come into the sites, there's a lot of hills sometimes in the sites, ups and downs. So we got to cut or remove uh, soil in some areas. And we have to fill and fill in soils when it's too low. And uh, the school is kind of balanced in that way. So we had to remove from one side, but we could fill with that same stuff we removed on the other side. This is a picture taken from the job trailer. It was a, I think it was last Friday morning. Um, so it was just about four or five days ago. Um, beautiful day. This is where the, uh, Precast gym will be. Precast is a concrete that's poured before it gets on site and we set it up together in pieces. And then the, the wing of the school goes like this. So once again, we're looking to the north. North is this way. Glacial Drumlin is over here on your screen, kind of back behind us. And this is what the progress looks like as of today. And now I'll let Kristen talk about activation planning and what that means for you in this industry. Thanks, Peter. 
Yeah, um, activation planning is something that we've been offering to our districts most recently, um, especially for projects that are going to require a lot of transition. So um, adding a new building to your district is a really big deal. So we have found that in conversations that we have with districts um, through a project and also at the end of the project, some of the challenges that districts um, have expressed were related to things that um, were in their court, certain responsibilities that they had and they wished they would have known a little earlier about it so they could have planned differently. Um, so we have a, a process that we use in a lot of other market sectors. It's done in healthcare a lot. So we've been introducing it into the education world and it's um, been getting some really great feedback. So we've created a template of um, different roles and responsibilities, um, different items that need to get done through the duration of construction. And then a lot of it is related to things that'll happen towards the end. But we found the earlier that we can talk about that, um, the earlier that you can be thinking about um, who's responsible for tasks and when you need to make decisions, um, it's much more effective. Um, so we are going to be starting this process in the fall. We like to make sure design is completely done, we're into construction, and then there's maybe a little bit more capacity to think about um, these items. So we take a look at our tool, we'll work with um, the district uh, representatives and start to look at them line by line and make assignments. Um, and certain things are things that are going to be in Findorf's court, so we just want you to be aware of them and we'll have dates on there. Certain things might be in EUA's court, um, other things might be um, in yours. So then you can decide, is it a Jared task? Is is it a principal task? Is it a Jeff Carr task? And when does that um, need to be done so that you're proactively planning for all of those things that'll happen really over the next um, year, year and a half. So, so we're excited about that process launching um, after the summer. Thanks, Kristen. Yeah. So that was the new school. Give you the schedule, kind of site overview, talked about activation planning. Now let's talk about the renovation. So there's, there's some significant renovations happening in this district as well. A lot of you know about them, but maybe this is a refresher for some or new for others. Um, we're working in, uh, in the Monona area, working in MG21, and we're working in Winnipeg, and we're working in the high school. Not at this moment just yet. We'll, we'll get to that. I'll talk schedule. And then uh, in Cottage Grove, we're working at Glacier Drumland, Cottage Grove, and Taylor Prairie. And then also part of the what we're calling is part of the renovations, although it's somewhat separate, is all the, the uh, high school athletics that were part of the referendum as well. So for the referendum projects, I once again will be the main point of contact, but it's a different site superintendent. It'll be Brian Hebel is the main site superintendent, and Brad Pastica is the project engineer for that. Um, Bob Biger still, he's the main contact, much like myself for, for EUA. And then instead of Gary, it's McLean, who's the construction administrator that's really getting into the details and answering our questions and, and all that for the renovation, which is a big task. There's a bunch of schools that are being renovated. So a little reminder on the renovation project schedule. Uh, this year, um, what we're happening this year is Win what's happening this year is Winnequa and Glacial Drummond. Uh, for a refresher, Winnequa was a two-phase uh, construction. It's happening some this summer of 2020 and some in the summer of 2021. That was because we didn't feel we could get it all done in one summer. Uh, I, will, I will say it's not showing on here because it's just so fresh that uh, with the canceling of, of school in the building, uh, we are actually going to be able to get an early start in this building. We're working with Angie and Jared and Jeff and, and the team to actually get a start uh, in this building on May 4th. Um, for those of you that have driven by, you've probably seen some things happening already. We had already started what we're calling some early, early work where we were replacing some duct work in the classrooms, um, trying to be as uh, invasive as possible. And so that has grown now that school has been canceled and we're actually starting the major part of the construction on May 4th. Glacial, Glacial Drumlin is going to happen this summer. We were always planning to start Glacial Drumlin early, early May, around the 11th. Uh, that hasn't changed. We're not moving it up. We're not moving it back. We're still starting on May 11th. There just won't be students uh, there as we're doing it. So you should see some fences going up for Glacial Drumlin in the next week or so. For Winnequa, to describe what's happening this summer, 2020, versus next summer, 2021, uh, I put together this little graphic. Everything in blue, regardless of the shading, is something that's happening this summer. But it, I should note that the dark blue represents what we would call significant renovation, where we're actually demoing out the whole room, making it a blank box and, and starting over, as it were. These, this on the first floor, so, so let me orient you. Uh, this is the entryway where you come in on the first floor. There's a little roundabout right here, uh, more round than I'm making it. And you come in right here, and then the principal's office and the reception would all greet you here. 
and this is the first floor. So this dark blue area back here, if you come in the front door, take a left and then a right and walk all the way down, this is the IMC. Uh, a lot of books are actually moving this, moving out right now. This is a pretty heavily renovated area. It will look like a brand new INC and, IMC and learning space uh, when, when we're all done. There's a couple classrooms if you walk in the front door and head east on that same level. Uh, there's a couple classrooms right there that are that are they're going to gut gutted and remodeled and uh, pass through door being put in, so it has some flexibility and collaboration. And then on the lower level, these two rooms down here are being uh, done the same thing too, where they are adding a door and some collaboration. And then on the lower level as well, so a lower level you can't access from this side because it's down a level. These are the two gyms, but if you were to access here and go all the way to the end, this is the art room uh, that that will be the art room right now. It's storage, so that is being. Uh, all the materials are being removed by the district right now and we're going to be gutting and, and putting new finishes into that room as well for the next year in 2021 uh, actually let me let me say one more thing about this these these light blue areas even though there's not a heavy renovation there the district is upgrading all the mechanicals which is all the duct work and all the piping in the whole building as part of the capital maintenance project adding new hvac units on the roof replacing all the windows around the entire building on both levels except for one window one window was replaced like five years ago, so we didn't need to replace that one. But uh, replacing all the windows and all the ceilings and light fixtures. So in all these classrooms, whereas there might not be new floors and new paint, it's going to be all new ceilings, all new light fixtures, uh, uh, high efficiency LEDs, brand new windows, uh, better windows than we have now that are better at more efficient is keeping the air out and in. And then the the next summer is the yellow area where it's going to be an all new office office complex with a secured entryway where you come in instead of coming in and, and ending up in the hallway, you have to enter through the first set of doors and be let into the reception area to the side here. And then you can be let into the school, much like you see in, in some of the other schools. So much more secure entryway, which was a key point in the referendum process as well. Moving on to Glacial Drumlin, uh, there's a lot of uh, lines and squiggles on this page. This is what one of our construction plans that's provided by EUA. And what I'm showing you here is just the green area is the addition. So if you come in the front door of, uh, of GDS, and here's a little picture of it. This is the current front door, and this is uh, uh, the space right here. You come in the front door, now you're coming in this way, and, if, and you're right in this big cafeteria here. You sort of see the beginnings of this round stage. So this area right now is just blacktop. This is going to be filled in with a new addition. You can see it right here. This new addition will have uh, windows and on this portion and brick on this portion. And there'll be an added serving area. So this is a current serving size space you have now with two lines, uh, more than doubling that with two more lines. And then this is additional seating space for the cafeteria to bring up the uh, capacity. And this is a, a rendering from EUA that shows what it'll look like uh, in the future. So here's the overall schedule. Some, once again, this is a graphic we've been using. It tweaks slightly here and there um, just to go through it quickly. Uh, the new school is, is what we talked about already. All the district-wide renovations are happening over the two summers. Uh, Winnequa is happening summer phase one and phase two. Cottage Grove is, has been moved to the summer of 2021. And then the other schools happening in 2021 are Taylor Prairie, Monona Grove High School, and the High School Athletics. So some of the keys to success that, that we see on a, a lot of school districts, but, but one, of the couple, one we want to share with you as a team uh, for construction at Monona Grove. Number one is safety. We really focus on safety. We, we, we encourage our subcontractors to focus on safety. We, we want our men and, and our women that are working with us to focus on safety. And so you're going to see things like fences up and signs out, and, and, and we're going to require people to wear certain things. And so um, as a part of this safety, we also have a requirement for what you can wear on site. Now, here's some pictures of some things you don't want to wear on site. We're a, a construction project, a large construction project, and so heels or, or uh not wearing a hard hat or not wearing safety glasses is, is really not allowed. So what can you wear? Here's what we can do. A little graphic that we've created, construction site attire, and who provides it as well? A hard hat, Findorf will provide that. If, if, and, and one thing I should note, Kristen will mention it too, we will be scheduling some, some tours, some periodic tours with the board uh, to walk through the job site. And, and if you come onto the site, a hard hat will be provided by Findorf. Safety glasses will be provided by Findorf. A high vis vest or high visibility vest, those yellow vests you see here in the pictures. So this is a really good example of what everybody looks like on the job site will be provided by Fendor. Sturdy shoes or work boots. That's what we recommend when you come onto the job site. There's no high heels or open toe shoes uh, like sandals or flip-flops. Uh, we would encourage you to wear those when you come out to the job site. 
And we would encourage you to wear long pants and sleeve shirts just for, once again, for safety and for your protections. Mm -hmm. So as you as we think about scheduling these, and Kristen will talk about that, uh, keep in mind you want to wear sturdy shoes or boots and wear long pants and a sleeve yeah. shirt. And we realize that we're, we're feeding a lot of information to you right now. So when we have that first scheduled tour and those ongoing scheduled tours, we will be sure you get this a copy of this again, just as that reminder of what we'll provide to you and what would be your responsibility for coming on site. Um, so just that reminder as we move to the next slide, um, we talked about our focus in the school world. Um, so we will have a really uh, big commitment to communications like we always have. Um, we, we understand that schools are a bit unique because you have so many different stakeholder groups and that's what this slide is really intended to show that um, every single stakeholder group receives information differently and also needs different information. So we really adapt to make sure that all of your stakeholders are getting the information when they should have it and so that it's appropriate for them. So your facility team, certainly, um, you know, Dan and Jared, you know, we're providing a lot of information to them real time, lots of details, lots of costs, lots of breakdown um, as we go. Um, you as a board, we want to be sure that we can periodically come and share information with you that's important because we understand that you are going to be contacted by members of the community and we want you to be able to answer questions um, if people do ask you things. So we will uh, provide some periodic updates to you. Um, and then the same goes for staff and parents and students. Um, big commitment to signage. Um, we're doing some real proactive planning um, with the district right now. Katie's very involved in that. We're mapping out what type of signage um, is needed. Um, now things have shifted in the last month here. So some signage that we wanted to have at the schools isn't as critical right now. So you'll start to see some of those more visible as we're all able to get um, on site, but we'll have visuals. We'll be sure that staff has the information that they need. We'll be sure that parents um, have some vi uh, visible signage as well. So they know where to go if anything is changing through construction. Um, and then just like we did through that pre-referendum process, we'll also continue to provide um, graphics and information that, that Katie and the rest of the team um, in the district can share to the community. Um, so things like Peter showed the drone um, video. Um, to us, it's a really great tool that we can use through construction. Uh, we're able to see things from a different lens, but oh my gosh, it has served as the best communication tool for school projects because the community members can really get a sense of what's happening, especially with something like a new school. That's really fun to see. So those are the types of things that we'll be sure that they can be shared on your website um, so that your community can see them or um, you can share them on social media as well. Um, so we talked a little bit about engagement. Um, I, I, Peter um, touched on the youth apprentice. Um, that's certainly important um, to us. If we can um, bring a student on that's interested in construction and allow them to get credit during their day to work with us um, right in uh, their district, that's a really big deal. We love those opportunities. Um, and then there's other things that might happen more organically. So if we are doing renovation work when um, school is occupied and there's times to teach, we'll certainly um, consider those. Um, we were hoping for a really big, um, fun groundbreaking, but unfortunately the timing of everything, um, it just couldn't work. So we're doing that virtually instead. Um, and again, making sure that you have some images, have some videos that you can still help build excitement among your staff, among your parents, among your community. So, so uh, we're thinking differently about how to keep people engaged um, right now when we're, a lot of us are in our homes. Um, Peter mentioned tours, um, those are being planned. So we, we do have a whole schedule of now through move in and we're thinking strategically about what are those opportunities for you to come on site when there's those key milestones that Peter said. So something really different or you know, a different stage of construction. So we'll talk to you about those as we move through construction and get you on site. Um, we're also looking to um, give you a hands-on opportunity if you're interested. Um, one of the things that you might be seeing on the, the bottom photo, that's actually a brick lane event. Um, that one happened to be in Verona where we made it, you know, it was, it was a fun event for board members and key administrators and they got to come on site 
And they get to literally um, take a brick, sign their name and work with our mason and lay that brick um, right on the building. So it was a really fun opportunity um, to do something hands-on, to have a mark on the school. And then after that event, we took everyone through and toured them. So, so we're gonna try to find a couple things like that that might be fun uh, for you as well. Um, and then we are talking about some other things that might have even more appeal to the community. We're talking about time capsule. Um, it's a new school, so it's a really great opportunity um, to potentially introduce a time capsule and, and a date stone. So we'll be thinking about those opportunities for you as a board and then also some opportunities for the community to get engaged and, and really feel a part of the project too. And all of that planning is being done right now with the district and, and Katie being um, very involved in that. So Peter, I think that's, I think that's a wrap. So I think we can transition over and answer um, any questions that you have about construction or anything that we've talked about today. Uh, let's see, Peter Sobel. I have two questions. Um, first of all, uh, you guys are aware that your site plan is out of date because of the um, requirements of the village for 180 feet on the northeast corner. The um, uh, detention pond and the fence has to be moved. And since you're, those will affect grading, I assume, are you you're aware of that? And have you got a new site plan on the way? We're 100 percent aware of that. What we showed you as a site plan was just the plan that we use to lay out fencing and parking lots that won't affect that very much at all. Uh, we are uh, awaiting a revised plan from EUA and point of beginnings. Second question is, how are we positioned to take advantage of potential drops in commodity prices, particularly concrete? Due to, what are you referring to? Due to oil price, concrete and oil prices are always inevitably linked. Are we locked into current concrete prices or do we have a way of taking advantage of potential drops? Uh, that's a great question. I would say, and I'm going to stop sharing here so we can all look at each other. Sorry about that. Um, okay. uh, Peter, that's, that's a great question. I would say as of right now, we're locked in at our price, which might sound like a little bit of bad news, but it's also great news because the other materials that are going up right now and are having trouble getting a hold of, we're not having that problem because we bought things out early. What's, what's increasing in price right now? Uh, we've just seen things that are harder to get and we're being told, I don't have specifics right now, but because we already had ours bought, I haven't had to reach out to anybody, but some of the subcontractors have said, hey, it's hard to get some of these doors or maybe some of the specialty equipment. They said, you can't get that as quickly or as cheaply. It would be a little bit more expensive because people are adding lead times and durations to things. So we're already uh, contracted out for, for example, the concrete for the slab and so on. That's correct. We were released uh, back in January, I believe. Okay, and that is sub to Findorf or somebody else? Uh, some of the concrete was sub to Findorf. Uh, for those of you that weren't aware, there was a bid process that, that Findorf, uh, the, the district managed. We, we worked with the district on that. Uh, there were 34 trade packages, which is where we say, this trade package say concrete or brick. The brick uh, trade package has to have brick and CMU and all the things in it. And we had bidders bid on that. And so uh, all the bids that were sent in were sent in to myself and Jared, except for the ones that were any of the bids that Findorf wanted to bid on ourselves. And those were sent directly to the district. We did not uh, have those bids. Those were opened by the district and then they were all evaluated. So uh, yes, Findorf is doing some of the concrete, the structural concrete, but Hamburg was the Hamburg construction, which is out of, uh, well, Monona and Cottage Grove sort of uh, local contractor. They were selected for all the site concrete, which is a lot of the flat work concrete you'd see curbs and sidewalks and such. As um, uh, Findorf, are you guys locked into price on concrete for the parts that you bid? As of right now, yes, we are. Uh, in a hard bid situation, we provided the bid uh, in good faith, just like the other competitive bidders did. And the number we had uh, was was locked in. Um, I, I'd be willing to look at that with Jared on the back end of things and see if there's uh, any opportunity. But as of right now, no one has uh, volunteered it to us. And I will say uh, in the bids we've gotten recently, we haven't seen the numbers go down yet. All right. Thank you, Peter. Uh, Lorraine? Um, has the current pandemic affected construction at all? That's a really good question. And we're trying to address that in uh, both our owner, architect, and contractor meetings we have on a weekly basis, and also in our foreman and progress meetings we have with our subcontractors. Um, in short, I would say it is it is impacting it a little bit. Uh, obviously, we're, we're an essential business. Uh, the governor has declared us an essential business, and so we're doing work. 
but it's changed how we do things. We can't have, you know, five guys all moving one little thing. Now we have to be a little more conscientious about how we move things. How many people are in a room? Are they allowed to be uh, more than nine? And that's the type of things we're having to watch out for now. So as far as manpower and getting things done, I would tell you we're probably just a hair bit less efficient, but we're still doing a great job and we're hitting our schedule. So I'm not really worried about that. Uh, we're also just like everybody else, if you're on the job site and you're eating lunch, well, sit more than six feet from somebody. Or if you're, or if you're walking through the hallway, let's let's just not get close. If people are not feeling well or have any sort of symptoms, they're not coming to job sites as of as of today. And I have not gotten my update yet today, but our our leadership team and Brian is one of them has been updating our staff and our subcontractors on almost a daily, almost every other daily basis with what we're seeing. And as of today, we I don't believe we've had a, a case on our job sites. Um, but if anybody has any sort of symptoms, we are encouraging them to uh, not show up to the job site. Um, Kristen, I'll talk to materials in a minute, but did you want to add to that at all? No, I think you're right. Um, and all of the, you know, the CDC and, you know, the different guidelines that are out there, we're following on site, you know, the, the extra sanitation and that we're doing and the cleaning of even like our small tools when we're done, you know, we're taking that extra step just like is recommended. So um, so it's been great to see, honestly, how the field staff have really adapted to that and it's become a part of their day. And um, yeah, it's been, it's been very successful so far. An, an interesting part of that, Lorraine, is every, every day we're supposed to do a huddle, our field staff does, and they get together and they all hang out. What are you doing today? Where are you going? They actually, they do a little, you know, stretches like they're in the army and, and uh, it's, it's really cool. Well, now you, you go out to a site early in the morning and there's like 30 guys or 30 girls all, all kind of standing eight, 10 feet apart from each other doing their conversation. Or you might, I've been out there now and I have a huddle with a group of guys and it'll be five or six of us. So I will say we, we just started working in uh, Winnipeg with a handful of people and we're, we're experiencing some, we're, we're all learning with this, right? You know, it's like my daughter keeps asking me questions about this. I'm like, baby, this changes every day, you know? And so I think the ability to be flexible is what uh, we've, we've really tried to do. And in working with uh, Dan and Jared and their team, uh, Angie out at Winnipeg and uh, Kristen at GDS, we're trying to be flexible with them as well. Uh, but even at Winnipeg, you know, we started working and they had teachers coming in. So we had to kind of, okay, time out. What, how do we go about this? And it's, it's new territory for us. So uh, as long as we're being flexible and over communicating with each other, I think uh, that's important. And that's how we're going about it. As far as material goes, we did buy a lot of our material or at least uh, purchase the, the whatever the we released it before the virus uh, came about. And so either the material has been released and is on its way, or it will be on its way and we're locked in at the price we're in. But as of right now, we've reached out to every contractor and every vendor and asked them, is there any issues with lead time with hitting schedules? For the new school, I, I'm not as concerned because we it's a, it's a longer schedule and we're, we've planned far enough ahead. For the renovations, it was a little bit of a, uh, we really want to dig into the details, say, okay, is this going to impact door frames or carpeting? Or, and right now we're not hearing anything except for a couple of minor things. The one we found is actually our job trailer, which is now on site. Uh, they were telling us that they were way busy providing job trailers for uh, uh, medical staff and police and National Guard for people that needed them. So. Great, thanks. Uh, Su Susan Fox. This is probably more for Dan. I just wondered, since you're starting at Winnequa on May 4th, um, have teachers been given an opportunity to pack things, get them moved out, and if you're doing duct work, I mean, that's a substantial work, a lot, you know, amount of work in a lot of classrooms. So just wondering if there's a... Yeah, they've been working on that the last few weeks, uh, schedule, okay. you know, a few at a time. And, and that's what Peter is alluding to, that as we are having teachers come in to do that work, and we had okay. people working in the building as well to, you know, look at, okay, how many people are in what areas. So uh, they've done a great job of, of managing okay. that. Great. And then um, my Susan, other question was, oh, sure, If I can, if, if oh, if sure, I can just ahead. finish answering that too, yeah. just to give you a little more. Uh, we had a meeting with Kristen, uh, not Kristen, I'm sorry, Angie last Friday. And then we had another meeting with her. Uh, we had a phone call with her today. She sent us a list of every room they're going into and what day they're going into it. Oh, and nice. so we're trying, we're distributing that to all of our vendors and contractors to say, okay, on this day, these six rooms you can't go into. Okay, so just great. And then my other question is, will you put your PowerPoint um, that you showed tonight on board docs so we can go back and reference it? That, that is really helpful. Thanks. Absolutely. Sure. Okay. okay, any more questions? Uh, any more concerns? Uh, Peter Sobel. Uh, Pete, you're on mute. There we go. I know I couldn't unmute. Who's the Who's the safety safety supervisor at the new school site? The new school site. His name is Aaron Strady. 
He's the safety supervisor. And then it'll be a couple different safety supervisors at the renovations. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, anyone else? Okay. Bob, you don't got nothing to say? <laughs> Just here in case if you need me. <laughs> All right. Um, well, thank you, everybody, for giving um, the updates and everything. I'm looking forward to it. I've been driving by there and looking at some of the progress already, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, thank you. Good presentation. Uh, Excellent. Thanks a lot. Thank so Have a great Thank rest you. of your night. Good seeing all of you. Yeah, it was great. Thank you. Yeah. See you guys. All right. Good night, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night. Okay. Uh, moving on to uh, possible action items, uh, staff contract amendment. We added this this evening. Normally, this would be a consent agenda item at our regular meetings. Uh, but we did, based upon the staffing plan that was, uh, you know, updated at our last meeting, um, we felt we would get these approved tonight um, prior to, you know, regular contracts going out to all of our full-time staff. Um, and so this is a direct um, relationship to the revised staffing plan. I will state that each of these uh, individuals have re already received these new contract FTEs and have signed to return them. So we're just looking for the board approval. I move approval of the staff contract amendments as presented. A second. Okay. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. All in favor, starting with myself, Andrew McKinney. Aye. Susan Manning. Aye. Susan Fox. You're on mute, Susan. We could read your lips. Hi. <laughs> uh, hey, Lorraine Gage. Hi. Peter Sobel. Hi. Elizabeth Cook. Hi. Eric Hart. Hi. All right, motion carries. All right, uh, I'd like to have a motion to convene into closed session pursuant on Wisconsin Statutes 19851C for the following. Consideration of employment and compensation of Monona Grove High School principal. So moved. Second. All right. Roll call vote. All in favor? Andrew McKinney, aye. Susan Manning? Aye. Susan Fox? Aye. Lorraine Gage? Aye. Peter Sobel? Aye. Elizabeth Cook? Aye. Eric Hartz? Aye. Motion carries, we are now in two closed session.